Hello, welcome to Talk of the Game. It's just finished Wolves 1, West Ham United 2. I love VAR. I don't. I hate VAR. But for once, it's gone in our favour. For once. And um, what a game that was. Um, a, a game of two halves. West Ham 1-0 down at half time. Come back to win it 2-1. In the last minute, a 99th minute equaliser by Wolves ruled out by VAR. Lots of talking points throughout this game as well as three goals to discuss as well. That's what we're going to be discussing. The highlights from the Molyneux as West Ham got equal points with Man United, who are in sixth place in the Premier League. If you enjoy this video, please do drop a like on it by clicking thumbs up. Helps out the video, helps out the channel, makes me very happy. I'm very happy right now, to be honest with you. But also subscribe if you're new to Hammer's Chat as well. And the reason I'm really happy, it's not because of the performance over 90 minutes. It's definitely not because of the performance over 90 minutes. I'm really happy because... All week I've been feeling that this is a massive, massive game for us. I can't say that. And then when we win, go, oh, no, I'm not that bothered by it. This was a huge game for us, in my opinion. If we want European football next season, which I do, I really want European football next season, we had to win today and we got it. Whether or not we deserved it, that's a different discussion. That's what I'm going to discuss throughout the video and I'll get your comments below as well. But we won. We won. Ultimately, we essentially had seven cup finals in the league coming into this one for European football next season. One win out of one. Happy days. Um, oh, absolutely glad that we've won. Glad. There's been a lot of entertainment in West Ham games recently, hasn't there? Lots of stuff to talk about. Anyway, the first half was absolutely dreadful. Uh, the 33rd minute they scored, they got a penalty. And I'm skipping up to that because there was nothing to talk about from a West Ham perspective. A decent chance for Thomas Suchek. Good work by Jai Bourne, Rob Samedo. Cut back to Suchek, who couldn't sort his feet out. Almost stood on the ball in the end. But uh, penalty to Wolves and Emerson bring down Ait Nuri in the box. It's one to truth be told, I can't see much contact. I cannot. However, and this is what I will say, I think the VAR did the right thing by not getting involved. I don't think it was a clear and obvious error. But when I've watched it numerous times now, I can't really see any obvious contact. Uh, sorry, sorry, no, 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 ignore that. I'm getting all muddled up with the, the Emerson goalie score. Scratch that, it was a pen, Stonewall penalty. Scratch that, sorry, 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 it's live, I can't edit it. Stonewall penalty, um, as far as I'm concerned. Emerson, I think he's expecting Knight Nudy to shoot. So he slides in expecting a shot to come, but he doesn't. He ends up catching Knight Nudy's foot. Stonewall pen, really good put away by Sarabia. Fantastic, well-taken penalty. 1-0 Wolves. And I'm not sure they deserve to go 1-0 up at that point. The, the whole half, Wolves dominated the half, but they didn't create anything. However, post their goal, I thought they were they cranked up a little, a little bit, actually, and they started to really sort of, grabbed the game by the scuff of the neck and we just couldn't do anything in the first half that first half was absolutely terrible from West Ham it was pathetic, the players performances were shocking, I thought Sufal was horrific at right back, he couldn't do a five yard pass, I thought Paqueta was our worst player in the first 45 minutes I thought a lot of players really struggled in that half and it was all Wolves, they deserved to be 1-0 up and in fact I would possibly argue we were fortunate to be only be 1-0 down at half time, I guess the good thing was it couldn't, it could only get better, and it did. Two subs by David Moyes at half time, bringing on Mikhail Antonio as well as Ben Johnson. Antonio should have started. I wanted Johnson to start. The team in the second half was barred uh, midfielder, I would have had Suchek or Ward Prowse. That was a team I wanted to see start the game, and almost instantly, Mikhail Antonio sort of made a difference up front. Um, uh, but it, it wasn't for long because after 10 minutes, 10 minutes of Mikhail Antonio. Jai Bowen had to go off. Now, I am absolutely buzzing with this win, but I'm a little bit... I'm worried and concerned as to the injury sustained by Jared Bowen. He's such a pivotal player for us. Never, ever goes down. Um, when he, when Bowen goes down, you know he's hurt. And he went down, got back up. He tried to stay on, tried to play on, which gives me encouragement that he's come off as a precaution and he just wasn't feeling right and it's not that serious. But I, I'd be lying if I said I wasn't concerned. And at this point, when Bowen went off, I'm not going to lie, I thought, oh, forget this, forget it. Because we were doing all right at the start of the second half. We There was a much improved performance from us. Players were back in their position with Antonio up front, Bowen on the right, Caduce left, Paquette in the 10. There was an improvement. But after that sub, when Bowen goes off, I did think, oh, no, nah, I'm not having this. Creswell came on. I got it. I actually got what he was doing because Emerson was on the booking and I thought he was struggling at left back. So I actually understood why he was bringing Creswell on. 
And the options were Ings, Mubama. Oh, sorry, Mubama wasn't there. Ings, Kone. And who do, you, who do you bring on? Well, there's not much there to pick from. But actually moving Emerson forward, I wasn't against it. But we changed formation, went three at the back, matched up Wolves and put Emerson and Ben Johnson at wing-backs. And I thought Ben Johnson was terrific, but we'll discuss his performances in a second. Now, this is the, the issue I've got. In the 63rd minute, West Ham thought we had an equaliser. Emerson, good ball in by Caduce. Emerson header, and it was ruled out by the referee, not VR. The referee called it free kick against it. was a foul on Emerson on Semedo. Don't think it was a free I say don't think it was a free kick. Like I said earlier, VAR did the right thing not getting involved. It wasn't a clear and obvious error either way. I just I've seen I've seen numerous replays. I can't see any obvious contact by Emerson on Samedi. I think he goes down way too easily. And that referee allowed a physical game. And it was good. It was good. Between the 18 yarders, both players were going at it. Both sets of players were going at it. I thought Paquetta was getting brushed off the ball. Fair and square. It was a physical game. The referee allowed it. And I thought it was a really good game and a really good tempo the referee allowed in open play. But that was not in keeping with how he refed the game. And I know in the penalty box, the rules differ. It, they're not meant to, but they do. And I think to some extent that's correct. Otherwise, we'd see a lot of penalties given. I'm just, I'm not convinced that's a foul by Emerson. I've just got to trust that there's there is sufficient contact there and I just can't see it. I'm being blind, uh, but I've got a loss of hearing, not a loss of eyesight. My eyesight is pretty good. I just can't see it. I just cannot see enough injury, uh, enough contact there uh, by Emerson. But nevertheless, when that happened, I did, again, I thought, oh, for what, this, what's going on? We finally get some and it's ruled out straight away. But we did make it 1-1 10 minutes later. Lucas Paqueta, uh, penalty. And Emerson, who gave away the penalty in the first half, really didn't make amends. Like I said, I thought it was harsh to have that one ruled out. But he wins the penalty. He pounces on Totti's um, error in the box. It, cross comes in, hits Coleman in the hand. And it's the arm's well out from his body. Um, like I said, I always dispute whether this is an unnatural position. When you're moving, your arm tends to move in front of your body. It's very difficult to move sideways. You're not a crab. Put your hands behind your back and move sideways at a speed is a very difficult thing to do. But nevertheless, we conceded a penalty against Everton a couple of months ago. The exact same thing with Kurt Zuma. So at least that one was consistent. Penalty to West Ham. Fantastic, well-taken penalty by Lucas Paqueta. Not going to lie, I um, panicked. I thought the keeper saved it. I thought Jose Sad did enough to keep it out. But 1-1. And do you know something? I thought we did well in the second half. I, up until this point and after this goal for a period of time, I thought we did well. I thought we played well. Um, Wolves, when they lost out Nuri, which was in the 55th minute, that killed Wolves, that substitution, because he caused us all sorts of bother. And until he went off, I thought I knew he was by far the best player on the pitch out of anybody. And when he went off, I thought Wolves' threat went off. And Cunha came on. I was a bit worried because good player coming on the pitch, but I thought he didn't really impact the game as much as what I knew he did. But in the second half, I thought it was all West Ham, truth be told. I thought first half was all Wolves, second half was all West Ham. And I thought we were good value and deserved the equaliser. And it was good to see us keep going, despite the fact that Bone had gone off injured. Emerson's playing left wing. We, we, we were doing well. I was impressed with how we were playing. Uh, we did make it 2-1. James Ward-Prowse, 85th minute, scoring direct from a corner. Uh, the wind got an assist on this one. I mean, the wind did more than some of our players today, quite frankly. But James Ward-Prowse with a corner, swung it in, just floated over everybody into the back of the net. It's one of them, you watch it, you see it, and you think, hang on a minute, is that just... Have I just witnessed what I think I've witnessed? Decent corner by James Ward Prowse. I don't think he's trying to shoot, but in fairness to Ward Prowse, whenever we do have corners from that side, he is always trying to hit that six yarder. He's always trying to get it in on top of the goalkeeper. Antonio does well to not touch Jose Sam, brushed him maybe, but that was enough to get the Emerson goal ruled out. So I'm surprised they didn't rule that one out. And it was enough to impact rules later on to some extent. But 2-1 West Ham. And then um, here we go. Controversy time in the 98th minute. And I'll be honest with you. We missed a lot of chances. And I thought we were really naive. We had a couple of breaks. Paquette with a fantastic ball to Mohamed Kudus. Couldn't sort his feet out. Well closed down by Jose Sa in the end. And then we had a free kick. I will be perfectly honest with you. I was fuming at James Ward-Prowse's free kick. 
because it was it was too far out for him to shoot. It was the ninety seventh minute, and he decided to try some sort of like knuckle duster shot as if he's Cristiano Ronaldo. He tried this effort a couple of weeks ago, and it was wet high and wide. In the ninety seventh minute, two one up, I thought, just please, just, just. When we were, he was lining up, I thought, surely he's not a way to shoot here. It's a 97th minute. Just keep it West Ham. Pass it. Just pass it. Even if you have to go all the way back to Fabianski and just kill a minute of the game by passing it around. I thought, please do not hit it. He took the shot. I thought, what on earth was that? Wolves pretty much go down the other end, get a corner. And wild clearance by Ben Johnson. Out for a corner comes. Ball comes in. Up goes Kilman. Bang, header. Now, I'll be honest with you. If I said I thought there was an error in this goal, I'd be lying. I was fuming. I thought we'd just thrown away another lead. I was ranting and raving and blaming this person and that person. Because Kilman essentially waltzed into the middle of our six-yarder and had a free header. And that's still true. That still occurred. There was no foul. It was an offside. Kilman still had a free yarder in the 99th minute in our six-yard box from a corner. It's just ridiculous. But anyway... Then he's like, hang on a minute, there might be offside. I thought, hang on, is there? Please, please, I'll take anything right now. I will be honest with you. Um, I can't remember the kid's name. Um, was it Chirera, Chiwomi? One of those two. Um, I think it's Chiwomi. Is, is, was it him? Um, Chirera? Chirera. He's the one, I think it was, that was stood in front of Lucas Fabianski. Is he offside? I mean, yes, he's be behind Alan Well, He's in an offside position. But I'm, I'll be honest with you. If I was a Wolves fan, I'd be livid. Because is he interfering in play? I don't believe he is. Is he obstructing Fabianski's view? Again, I don't think he is. Fabianski's not getting anywhere near that ball, regardless of whether he's there or not. The ball is consistently, I don't know, 10, drops down to 8 feet in the air or something. I don't know how, how high Kilman leaps to head it. But my point is, it's above... The Wolves player's head at all times. Fabianski can see that ball the whole way, including when it goes past him into the back of the net. I don't think he's obstructing Fabianski's eyesight whatsoever. Um, and, and the reason I say this is because when I complain about VAR going or referee decisions going against West Ham, I've got to be fair and say, well, I think that's a bit harsh when it goes in favour of West Ham. But I'm not going to complain. I am not going to complain whatsoever because we've got the three points for it. And I'm absolutely buzzing with that one because today was a huge game we were not at our best whatsoever the first half was terrible one of the worst 45 minutes i've seen us play for quite some time not all season fulham not all season but for quite some time that's the worst we played and there's definitely a correlation between no michael antonio west ham performing there's definitely a correlation there but we switched it up in the second half we shouldn't have got into that position but we did we turned it around and I thought, I thought we did all right in the second half. I thought there was only one team in it and one team wanted to win, and that was West Ham United. And sure, it was because Wolves didn't have enough players, etc., etc. But I don't really care. Truth be told, I do not care. We won the game. Huge game for us. Huge test. We got the win. The injury to Bowen is the biggest concern. I I'm buzzing. I'm absolutely buzzing. Bring on by Leverkusen on Thursday. Now, if we play like that... We're going to get beat. There's no doubt about it. We're probably going to lose anyway. There's a way, reason Leverkusen are top of the Bundesliga, unbeaten all season. But we won such a huge game. In terms of individual player performances, Paqueta was much better in the second half. First half, I thought he was a bit embarrassing, truth be told, just diving around, looking for free kicks and didn't get into the game whatsoever. I thought he was our worst player. I thought Soufal was really bad. I thought both centre-backs had a good game again. Again, this is becoming a frequent occurrence now with Mavapanos and Zuma. I think Zuma's had a few decent games, but he was really good against Spurs. I thought he was really good today. That moment at the end there when he had to sort of guide the ball out for a goal kick, I thought was fantastic defending by Kurt Zuma. A couple of good breaks from the back in possession as well from him. I thought Zuma was absolutely fantastic today. I thought Mavapanos was, again, faultless. Another really good performance from him. This is... A centre-back pairing is starting to form with them two now. We're looking good with, at the back with those two. I thought Emerson was really bad in the first half. I thought he really struggled. In the second half, I thought he was fantastic, especially after the substitution. When Creswell came on, Emerson moved forward, sort of relieved him of his defensive duties, but it was in keeping with the game. We had all the momentum. 
but I thought he looked excellent going forward. Unlucky not to score, creates the penalty. I thought he had a really good second half, um, Emerson did. Caduce, busy, struggled to get into the game at times, but busy for us. And I thought Antonio made a big difference when he came on as well, which is probably unsurprising. But an absolute massive, massive win for us. I'm absolutely buzzing by it. Um, you know, at half time, I was really angry. I was really angry at half time with the performance of the players and the team selection by David Moyes. But right now, listen, once I calm down, my emotions are high. We've just seen a 99th minute goal chopped out in favour of West Ham. When I calm down, I might be a bit, whoa, we got away with that one. And I think we did get up there a little bit. But right this second, I just, guys, I don't care. Um, we, we won. We had to win today and we won it. European football has got a little bit more likely off the back of today's win. There's still a long, long way to go, but we're in a good position. The only downside is I see Newcastle beat Fulham 1-0, so that's a bit of a, a bad one. But Bournemouth lost, and I appreciate they're way down in 12th at the minute. But had we lost today and results gone against us, we'd have dropped down to 11th just ahead of Bournemouth. That's how tight the Premier League is at the minute. So, um, anyway... Come on, Arsenal. Never thought I'd say that, but I'm hoping Arsenal can beat Brighton and then somehow Sheffield United beat Chelsea tomorrow and Liverpool beat Man United. That would be a perfect end to the weekend as a West Ham United fan. Um, ben Johnson, by the way, I thought was absolutely fantastic. I thought Ben Johnson made a huge difference to us. Going forward, I thought he was really good. I thought his passing was really good. One of few players who got on the ball and dribbled. One of few players who tried to pass the ball forward on multiple occasions. He did both. Not every player did one of those things. Ben Johnson was doing both. I thought he was superb when he came on. So a massive, big, well done to Ben Johnson. Do you know what? Man of match, Kurt Zuma. I thought Zuma was magnificent. Well done, Kurt Zuma. Back to your best. Anyway, I'm going to shut up and disappear. Thank you for joining me. If you've enjoyed this video, please do drop a like on it by clicking the thumbs up. It literally takes two seconds and it's free. and helps the channel out a lot. And also, please do subscribe to you around here. I'm going to play the end slate for a few seconds, and I'm going to be back to tell you about an event with myself and Gonzo next week if you want to join me. But if you don't want to listen to it, now's your time to go. And now for you lot that have stuck around, because either you want to know about their event or you are nosy. On Thursday, we are doing our first ever Hammers Chat live show. Ever. First one. We went to do one before Christmas. It couldn't happen for one reason or another. But this Thursday it is happening in Hackney Wick. Myself and Gons will be doing about a 30, 40 minute um, live show on a platform, stage platform, uh, in front of people for the first time. I'm really nervous already. Not going to lie, shitting it. But I'm looking forward to it. It'll be a good occasion. Then afterwards, we're going to have the Barry Lee accusing West Ham game on. So we'll go, we'll do our thing about 7 p.m. ish, then at 8 o'clock. Obviously, it's a kickoff of Lee accusing against West Ham. If you want to join us, if you're a patron, you can get your ticket now. Go to patreon.com for us, Hammer Chat. Please log in. There's a link there. Get your ticket. But also, you get £5 off if you're a patron. If you're not a patron, the remaining tickets will go on sale for the Hammer Chat section on Monday afternoon in a couple of days' time. So if you've got your ticket, thank you so much for the support. We're hoping to get about 100 people there. It would be a massive success. Uh, and then we'll watch the Bayer Leverkusen game together and hopefully celebrate a famous West Ham win. But anyway, I hope to see some of you there. It would be a pleasure to meet some of you. Some of you have watched us for nine years, which is just ridiculous. But it would be a genuine pleasure to meet some of you. But anyway, myself and Gons, the first ever live show. I'm nervous. I hope to see some of you there. Tickets, patreon.com forward slash Hamish Chat.